Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Character Driven. My name is Paul, I'll be your GM for a little while, and I'm excited to talk to you guys about today about another guild in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. And uh, this week I want to talk to you about Boros. Super excited for that, I'll be sharing with you my character that I made up for that, and maybe some little tips and ideas that you may be able to steal that, uh, that I do with my character that you might want to do with yours, because you know... Uh, I believe uh, role-playing is character-driven. Uh, everybody's character adds to the story, and that gives a lot of room for whoever GMing uh, your game uh, to be able to use those backstories. So the better characters we create, I believe, uh, the better the story is. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in then to um, Boros and see what we can come up with. All right, so here we are, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, and we're talking about the Boros Legion. And I want to be able to share with you now four facts that you might need to know about the Boros Legion. If you're looking to create a character for uh, the Boros Legion, there are some facts that you may want to know that may help you decide that. So, fact number one, angels are the top tier of the military. And uh, I, that opens up all kinds of things that you, that you could be involved in there. If angels are the top brass in the Boros Legion, well, that leads to all kinds of things. Um, I have a feeling that uh, the Rakdos uh, Guild, uh, you know, uh, it represents the opposite of that. And so uh, I think that makes for some deep dives into lore and maybe the underworld and some other cool things that uh, may come out of it. So I think that might be really cool. The second thing is that soldiers serve to keep peace and bring justice. I'm all about some peace and justice. And uh, these are these are your... You know, your Roman soldiers, these are your, uh, you know, your centurions, you know, who kind of march through the streets and, uh, you know, take care of business. And so that's kind of exciting. The third thing is uh, trained at the Horizon Military Academy. And I, I like that because you could start your characters there. You could actually, if you wanted to all play Boros or something like that, you could just put them at the Military Academy and run them through tests and, you know, all that kind of jazz. And that'd be a lot of fun to, you know, see how they operate within a boot camp. You could really explore the boot camp system, uh, if you will, of the uh, of the Horizon Military Academy and create contacts and things like that. So that way you're meeting other people in the boot camp and stuff and, and those who are in charge and that kind of stuff. So that might be kind of cool. Uh, and then the fourth thing is uh, that most soldiers in Boros are human minotaur and goblin which i find to be uh really odd but uh I, i'm not too upset about it because uh i'm going to share with you my character i decided to go ahead and make a minotaur character and i'm excited about that but i'm also going to think i'm going to make a goblin character because who doesn't want to play a goblin uh in you know in a legion of, of warriors i think that'd be kind of fun so let's go ahead and jump in and i'll share a little bit about the character that i created for the boros guild all right, here's my guy. Uh, his name is Dornick. Uh, he's, of course, in the Boros Guild. I have made him a champion, so I'm excited about that, uh, being a fighter, and he's just going to plow through people. In fact, some of his weapons that I, I gave him, I just gave him a great axe, and I gave him a trident. I thought, how cool would that be to have a have a minotaur with a throwing trident, and that'd just be a, a lot of fun to pick up and, and just toss around a little bit. Uh, he's lawful neutral. You know, he is, uh, you know, he does tend to lean uh, good because of justice and other things, but then he tends to be a little harsh. He tends to be a little hard on people, uh, more more in the uh, lawful realm. Uh, you know, he's, he's just hard on people. He just wants people to stay in line and do what they're supposed to do and obey the law so he doesn't have to get difficult with them. So, uh, and he tends to stay neutral in the sense of uh, the, the good and evil part there. Like I said, he leans more towards good, but he understands the difference, and so he will he will step up when it's time. Uh, he's also his role is uh, I met him and made him a gruel raid party. Um, uh, you know, right now he's just part of the group. Hopefully, he will lead his own group one day, and uh, he will go around and uh, take care of those uh, folks there. And we'll get into those guys later on. Uh, but yeah, he's going to take care of the uh, the gruel guys that uh, deal with vegetation and all that kind of good stuff. Getting into more of his uh, personality here, uh, he wears the uniform with honor. He is a uh, certainly a, a proud Boros. Uh, he is very military. As if you know, if you know military veterans, he's, uh, you would say he's very gung ho uh, about the Boros Guild, and so he likes to uh, he likes to. Uh, you know, he's got some tattoos, I'm sure, of uh, various things and shields and whatnot. And uh, and so he's got them on his arms, I don't know, like military guys will. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, his ideas, one team, one dream. He is, um, you know, he's a bit of a motivator. He's like, okay, guys, 
you know, we're going to do this together. We're going to, he's very up there in the, you know, in the, uh, you know, sense of, of, you know, being uh, one unit and really trying to get things together. So he may get a little annoying uh, if he's, if he's not the, if he's not the leader of the party, he may try to become the leader of the party and, uh, and he may just may try to over motivate people. Um, his bonds, he was, uh, he owes his life to a Boros captain. I haven't quite decided uh, how that's going to be. I, I want to say that maybe he was rescued, um, you know, from some sort of disaster, maybe from the, from the gruel, uh, which uh, he is um, obsessed with at this point, because I think uh, that's how he, why he is not a big fan of the gruel. Uh, that, in fact, that's his flaw. He is somewhat obsessed with, with the uh, with the gruel and uh, he, he just he wants to stamp them out. So I haven't quite fleshed that part out. Feel free to leave your uh, ideas in the comments. By the way, I, I'd love to hear your what could be his backstory with the gruel. What what thing could have happened to him that would make him uh, obsessed with them? That uh, he needs to deal with them in that way. Some other little tidbits I, I'm throwing in here uh, as far as maybe his contacts go. Uh, his Boris contact that he has, he he knows someone. Uh, who serves aboard uh, the Parhelion II, which is a big, giant flying fortress, which I think he'd like to one day uh, be in that, maybe serve on that. And, and that could uh, you know, come in handy if, uh, if he just needs some contacts in that, in that regard. I haven't fleshed him out yet, but I'm going to give him a job and those kind of things. And then his non-Boros contact I'll give him is a Simic Biomancer uh, that he gets together with at a local tavern and plays chess with him. So I thought that was just kind of a fun thing where he's got a friend there and he goes and plays chess with him sometimes and he's super smart. He's a smart guy. He's got lots of uh, intelligence and whatnot. And so I think he likes to to flex that intelligence, you know, towards uh, towards others. You know, he doesn't want to be just considered a, uh, a big brute. He wants to be able to say, look, I can use my mind as well. One last little tidbit uh, that's in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica in the Boros Legion section, page 38. There's a little, uh, little blue box down there on a proud military uh, tradition. And uh, it says, Generations of Minotaurs of, of the Ordruna family line have served with honor and distinction, claiming more than 15 generals to their lineage. And so I may just include there somehow, I'd like to, if I tell whoever the... Uh, GM is uh, at the time that, you know, he'd like to be, maybe he finds out that he's related somehow, that uh, he has that lineage of the Ordruan family. So that'd be kind of fun to flesh that out and see whether or not he can um, maybe attain to general. That'd be a lot of fun to do that. And that's it, everybody. That is uh, my take on the uh, Boris Guild. And um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you had a lot of fun. I'm going to give you some ideas. Love to hear your comments. Uh, so please go ahead and leave some comments down below and uh, let me know your suggestions. Maybe you have a, uh, a Boros character that you're developing and what are you doing with him or her that, uh, that I maybe can learn from. So thanks for hanging out for a little while. If you uh, enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know you enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, there'll be more videos in the future. So that's it for now, everybody. You guys have a great one. And don't forget to make your game character-driven. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.